All right, if I'm going to be living life as an adventure, fulfilling the mission that God has given us, then I better get packing. Only the essentials, of course. You know, I've got my first aid kit, gotta stay safe. Pocket knife, those always come in handy. Matches, just in case. I'm gonna need some snacks. All right, I don't wanna go anywhere without my Bible. Take that, and a notebook, okay. Travel buddy. What else do I need? Flashlight, check. More snacks. I love food. What can I say? All right. Water bottle. Gotta stay hydrated, right? Okay. Oh, it's getting full. But I can't leave without a weight just in case I need to get stronger on the journey. Okay. And more snacks? Why not? Last thing. Sleeping bag. Okay, I think oh, I'm ready. Whoa, this thing's kind of heavy. You know what I really need? A helper. Welcome everybody to our Go series where we're talking about going on this mission that God has sent us on to share the good news about Jesus with the whole world and to teach people to follow the way of Jesus. We're going to continue that lesson by looking in the book of Acts in chapter 2. What do you guys think? The book of Acts, New Testament or Old Testament? New. Good job. Does anybody know who wrote it? It was Luke. That's right. What other book of the Bible did Luke write? The Gospel of Luke. Yeah. And really, Acts is a sequel to the Gospel of Luke, where in Luke we are reading about the life and works of Jesus. Now in the book of Acts, we'll continue to learn about the works of Jesus, but they're going to be through his people. And before we get into our lesson, why don't we say a word of prayer? Prayer is us talking with God. Join me in praying right now. God, help us to do your work by the power of your spirit. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for praying, everybody. Okay, just to get everybody up to speed on the book of Acts so far, we saw in Acts chapter one that Jesus, who died on the cross and then rose again, he had been hanging out with his friends, the disciples, for 40 days, teaching them all about the kingdom of God and this mission, the Great Commission, that they were gonna be going on. So as Jesus is getting ready to go up to heaven, he says, wait here in Jerusalem for the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, let's dive into Acts chapter 2. Starting in verse 2, it says this, On the day of Pentecost, which was a special Jewish holiday, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. <sighs> and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. So there they are hanging out in this house when there's a really loud noise and then fire over their heads and then they start speaking languages that they don't know how to speak. And somehow, all of this has to do with the Holy Spirit. And as we think about speaking languages that we might not know, that gives me an idea for a game. Game time! All right, I'm calling this game Guess the Language. I'm going to give you guys a traditional hello type greeting from 10 different languages, and it's your job to match those up with the correct language that's being spoken. So after you hear the language, try to match it up. At the end, I'll show you what the correct answers were, and you get one point for every correct answer that you get. You guys ready? Here we go. All right, what's up first? Ni hao. Ni hao. What language is that? This is your chance to match it up. 
Okay, next one. Bonjour. Bonjour. I apologize for my terrible accent. Again, I don't speak these languages. Okay, keep going. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. What about... Hola. Hola. Alright, what's up next? Guten Tag. Guten Tag. How about... Ciao. Ciao. And... Jumbo. Jumbo. What about... Aloha. Aloha. Give you a little hint on that one. Uh, a couple more. Barev. Barev. And last but not least, Shalom. Shalom. Okay, here are the correct answers. How many did you get? No matter what, it's pretty good because I'm sure you guys don't know all ten of those languages either. Alright, but back in the story, we had Jewish believers from all over the world who'd come to Jerusalem for that special holiday, Pentecost. And while they're there, they hear the loud noise from the house of the disciples, and they rush over to see what in the world's going on here. And this is what it says in verse 7. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. We all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed, which means confused. What can this mean? They asked each other. Did you guys catch on to a couple of those questions they asked? How can this be? Something is happening that's not humanly possible. They're speaking in these languages that they don't know how to speak. The answer? The power of the Holy Spirit. And the other question, what does this mean? Well, I think the answer is that it means that God's Spirit is working through His people. And I hope people ask those same sorts of questions about us as we go to fulfill the mission of God. Do you guys remember when I said there was fire coming over each of the disciples' heads? Well, in the Bible, we're reminded that there are many times where God comes and is present with His people and there's fire involved. Think of Moses in the burning bush, or Moses going up to Mount Sinai where there was fire on top, or God's tabernacle, his tent, where he went with his people through the wilderness where there was a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud, and God's presence was with his people. Well, here, now this fire over the heads of the disciples says that God's presence is going to be with us, with you and me, the followers of Jesus, are going to have the Spirit of God with them. That's that Holy Spirit that Jesus was talking about. And Jesus gave the Holy Spirit a great nickname. He called him our helper, because the Holy Spirit is going to help us in many ways. I wish I had time to describe them all, but know that the Holy Spirit is going to give us power to do what we need to do to fulfill the mission of God, even when that means doing things that are beyond what we are capable of doing, things that are miraculous, like speaking different languages. That's awesome. The Holy Spirit is also going to help us by helping us to understand the Word of God. As we go to do the mission of God, we're going to understand all that we need to know about that mission as the Holy Spirit in us is helping us to understand. Now we, the church, the people of God, are going to bring the presence of God with us as we go. And we know that the Holy Spirit will be our helper. He is going to help us as we go. That's it for this week. As always, I hope that you guys will stay connected with us. And one of the best ways to do that is to join our Facebook group so you can ask your comments and questions and give prayer requests and find out things like, why does Pastor Rip have a mohawk? All right, I love you all. Have a great week. God bless you. Okay, this song is called, Lord, I Lift Your Name On High. So be sure to be dancing, be sure to be moving around and doing the hand motions with us as you sing. All right, here we go.
That was awesome. All right, this song is called Praise Ye the Lord. And you can pick a part if you want. You can sing just the hallelujahs or just the praise ye lords, but make sure you're singing no matter what. All right, here we go.